guys, Ollie here, the wannabe pilot, wrapping up again what was my sixth out of seven uh, CPL theory exams, aerodynamics. Walked away with a 70% mark. If you've watched the last couple videos, you would have noticed that I've been hitting the just pass mark on the last three now. My MET exam got, I oh know, MET, I got like 75. Human factors, I got 70. Air law, I got 80. Now this aerodynamics exam, I got 70. So I'm just sneaking through. It's kind of good that I'm passing, but it also means that I'm racking up a heap of KDRs. I'm gonna go through my KDRs from aerodynamics first up, and then expand a little bit about what was involved in those KDRs and what I thought that I was missing out on and how I would study if I was to do it again and refine so I didn't actually end up slipping up on those points. So there's a few, again, obviously getting a 70% mark means that 30% of the test has to be go gone back and revised on based on the KDRs that I dished out. So I run through them. Induced drag, rate of climb, aerofoil terminology, variations lift drag ratio with angle of attack, factors affecting stability and control, two KDRs under that one. Uh, control service features, three KDRs there, and there's two wake turbulence KDRs. So breaking them down, I found that a big part of aerodynamics was learning and thoroughly understanding the relationships between the different forces. So the lift drag, weight lift, thrust drag relationships, getting those concepts really um, solidly understood and not just the concepts, but also how they're displayed in the graphs and the charts, which points on those graphs and charts mean what? Really, really important, because you can take that information and then apply it to a whole range of different questions that the exam and the flying asks of us. So yeah, understand your relationship between your different forces. I use the Bob Tate books again this time around. They were good. He does a great job of illustrating some of those relationships, but I didn't comprehend thoroughly enough those concepts that he laid out in the book to be able to take it in exam there. Aerofold terminology, there's quite a lot when we break down the different areas of a wing when we're doing studying aerodynamics. And there's a few new concepts that we learn as well after PPL in this CPL module. So going through and maybe doing flashcards or something like that for the different parts of the wing and the new features that we learn about as well could be a good thing to uh, practice with. Factors affecting stability and control means that we need to understand center of gravity, um, center of pressure, the way that the aircraft's designed, and then what's going to happen in those with, with the different variables. So when we have a forward center of gravity, what are the control surfaces doing with that forward center of gravity? Likewise, if we have a rearward center of gravity, how is that affecting our flight? Getting a really good grasp around that is going to help you a lot with aerodynamics. Control surface features. In aerodynamics, we talk quite a bit about trim tabs and also the other features on your control surfaces, which we need to understand what they're actually doing. So counterweights under ailerons, trim tabs on your rudder and also your elevator. So understanding what relationship that has and what they're actually doing to make the effect on the primary control surface. Minimum drag speed, understanding where that is and what we're achieving at minimum drag. And then wake turbulence, they were the last KDRs. Wake turbulence, I think if I was gonna go back and do the exam again, I would actually try and simulate a whole heap of different situations where we would have to try and avoid wake turbulence. So we're in a light aircraft and a Boeing 747 takes off. How many minutes behind it do we need to allow between takeoff? Likewise, crossing runways. So even if you have a mate, you could draw a heavy aircraft taking off with a certain amount of minutes and then a light aircraft taking off behind it or landing behind it or taking off on a cross runway. Just simulate these different takeoff and landings and you'll be able to take that into the exam and also take it into your flying. Uh, be pretty well equipped to be able to answer those questions safely and then also fly safely. So yeah, they had pretty much all my KDRs. Nice big list. Look, I was happy to get away with a pass and actually from when I have sat down with one of our instructors and gone through the KDRs, 
I feel like I've actually learned those subjects of deficiency in a lot more depth than what I probably could have, well, what I did in preparation for the exam. So although, yeah, my score wasn't that good, I feel like at the end of the day, I'm actually getting a fairly good understanding of these concepts just because I have to go back and spend the extra mile on learning them. Not ideal, I'd like to get higher marks, but again, at the end of the day, we're really getting a good understanding about the different um, bits and pieces with aerodynamics here. So I've actually finished my final exam, Aeronautical General Knowledge, and I'll wrap it up with a, another video similar to this uh, coming up shortly. So stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed to uh, my channel, subscribe, clicking the button below. But yeah, thanks for tuning in and hopefully this sheds a little bit of light on what is to be expected in aerodynamics. I will put some notes uh, below in this video just talking about what I used and what I would recommend doing in practice for aerodynamics. Thanks, cheers, and safe and happy flying.